In this short video, we're just going to do a refresher of linear equations. We're going to look at initial value problems and boundary value problems. So let's start with the initial value problems. So recall that a general linear differential equation is a differential equation which has this form. This would be an nth order differential equation. All of the coefficients and the right-hand side are going to be functions that depend only on x, or they could be constants. And then if we have an nth order differential equation, we'll need n initial values. So if I had a second order differential equation, I would need two initial values. If I had a first order differential equation, I would need only one initial value. And again, the coefficients, they could be constants. So be aware, you know, the book says they must depend at most on x. Uh, and so uh, a function of x, which only has a constant, is still a function of x. So they could be constants. And in fact, in this uh, section of our work, we're going to have an entire uh, section devoted to second order differential equations with constant coefficients. And we can be uh, guaranteed that if we have continuous coefficient functions, a continuous right hand side on an interval i, and very importantly, that the leading coefficient does not equal zero anywhere in the interval. And we want x not to be in the interval. If all of those conditions hold, then we're going to get a, a solution and the solution will be unique. So here's a simple example. We have a third order differential equation. We've got three initial conditions. And the only function which satisfies this equation with these initial conditions is uh, y must be identically zero on the entire real number line. So here we're asked to verify that uh, three e to the two x plus e to the negative two x minus three x is a solution to the va uh, initial value problem uh, y double prime minus 4y equals 12x with the initial conditions that y at 0 equals 4 and y prime at 0 equals 1. So we're just going to verify it. So let's take the first and second derivative of the given function for y and substitute it into the given differential equation. So our left hand side would be this is our y double prime minus 4y. And do some algebra. Let's remove the brackets there and collect the like terms. So I see that I have a 12 minus 2x minus 12e to the 2x. And then 4e to the negative 2x. And then minus 4e to the negative 2x. So the only term that's left over is the 12x which is what our right-hand side is in the given equation. Now, the only thing that we're left to check are the initial conditions. So certainly y at 0, just substituting into our given equation, is indeed 4. And y prime, here we took the first derivative. So let's go ahead and put 0 in there. And sure enough, we get 1. So that is, the given function is indeed a solution to the initial value problem. So an important note here, again, if this, here the lead coefficient is a constant, it's one. But if I had a function there and it were equal to zero in the uh, interval, then all bets are off. Uh, the initial value problem may not have a solution, and if it does, it may not be unique. It may be unique, it may not, we just don't know. Now, 
let's look at some boundary value problems. So in a boundary value problem, again, you have a, here we have a second order uh, differential equation, and it's going to be linear. And we're going to have two boundary conditions. So in this case, we're told that at when x equals a, y will equal y naught. And when x equals b, y equals y1. Now there's other possible boundary conditions. It's a second order uh, differential equation. So the boundary conditions could involve either the function itself, so this the solution function, or its first derivative at a or b. So the way we wrote this, it was just the function at both endpoints. So I could have the derivative at one point and the function at another point. Or again, I could just have the function at a, the derivative at b. Or I could have the derivative at a and the derivative at b. Those are all possible boundary conditions. So notice that the boundary conditions are specified at different x values, at x equals a and x equals b. But initial conditions are always specified at the same x value. So let me make that correction here. So we saw that everything was defined at, every initial condition was defined at the same x value, which we called x naught. All right, let's go through this one step at a time. A boundary value problem may have many, or exactly one, or zero solutions. So in a previous video, we saw that the solution of the differential equation x double prime plus 16x equals zero has the form x equals c1 cosine of 4t plus c2 sine of 4t. So let's put in some boundary conditions and see what solution comes out. So in other words, we're going to try to find values for C1 and C2. So if we say that when uh, t equals 0, that x will equal 0, and when t equals pi over 2, x will also equal 0. And so... Um, If I put in the first boundary condition, um, remember cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero. So that would leave me with C1 equaling zero. Well, what about C2? I'll need to use the other boundary condition. When I multiply pi over two times four, I get two pi. And cosine of two pi is going to be one and sine of two pi is zero. So I'm going to have C2 times sine of two pi. So this is an identity. No matter what value of C2 you choose, this will always be true. And so C2 could be any number. And as a result, we would have infinitely many solutions of the form X of T equals C times sine of 4t. Well, let's work on some different bounded conditions. We're going to still maintain that when t equals 0, x will equal 0. But now we're going to enforce that x times pi over 8 has to equal 0. So if I multiply 4 times pi over 8, I'm going to get pi over 2. Remember, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we'll still get the same value for C1. But now, uh, the only way we can make this second equation from the second boundary condition true is if C2 is 0. So both C1 is 0 and C2 is 0. And so the only solution is x of t equaling 
zero. It's identically zero. And finally, let's suppose the boundary condition where x is zero when t is zero, and x is one when t equals pi over two. So it's very similar to case A, but now we're, we require that uh, x at pi over two equal one rather than zero. So again, still c1 equals zero, but now let's look at this equation here. I go ahead and replace t with pi over two, and so uh, multiply that times four, I'll get sine at pi over two, which is zero, but my right-hand side is one. Well, I can't multiply anything times zero and get one. So this is what we call a contradiction. And whenever you arrive at a contradiction in imposing the boundary conditions, there means there is no solution. So I hope you found this uh, video a good refresher for uh, linear differential equations with either initial conditions or boundary conditions.